everyone here i'll discuss about the histology of endocrine glands so this endocrine glands which secrete the secretions that uh, the hormones directly to the blood so they are also called the ductless glands here i'm going to talk about this thyroid and parathyroid gland then pancreas adrenal and this one that is the pituitary or this hypophysis cerebrum the thyroid you can see in this anterior region of the neck these are this uh, right and left lobes or this lateral lobes on the posterior aspect of the lobes superior and inferior you can see there is the right and left superior parathyroid and the right and left inferior parathyroid glands the pancreas this is a soft lobulated elongated organ you can see behind the stomach then over this upper pole of this right and left kidney there you can see the right and left adrenal glands then in this pituitary fossa of this middle cranial cavity there you can see the pituitary gland or the hypophysis cerebrum which is attached to this uh, floor of the hypothalamus by means of a pituitary stalk okay so here we'll see this uh, microscopic structure of this thyroid gland okay so this entire gland is covered by a uh, fibrous capsule so the septa from this capsule divides this glandular part into numerous lobules this is one lobule this is the another lobule you can see in between this lobules these are this interlobular connective tissue you can see this are uh, venules can this arteries also there then it consists of two types of cells here you can see these large ones this with filled with one pink substance these are the follicular cells and also there are the parafollicular cells these small cells these are the parafollicular cells okay coming to this follicular cells here these are the follicular cells it is lined with this one uh, cuboidal cells in the active stage and in active stage this follicular cells are lined with the flat cells that is the squamous cells then this is the lumina of this follicular cells which consists of this uh, colloid this is the pink substance that is the colloid those are it those includes this uh, thyroglobulin it consists of the thyroglobulin this thyroglobulin globulin these are the inactive adenated thyroid hormones okay these are the inactive form of this uh, thyroid hormones so the secretions of this uh, follicular cells that is the t3 and the t4 uh, which is the triiodothyronine and the uh, thyroxine which have various effects on this fat protein carbohydrate carbohydrate metabolism okay then here you can see this the hypervie of this uh, thyroid this large one these cells these are the follicular cells okay lined with cuboidal cells in active stage so this active follicular cells this colloid mass will be less okay and uh, these follicles are smaller inactive follicles are larger and there is the large amount of this colloid here you can see this the parafollicular cells these round these are the parafollicular cells are there it can be seen either in singly or in groups this parafollicular cells then they can be found within the basal lamina of the thyroid follicle this is the basal lamina of the thyroid follicle see here one you can see in between this basal lamina of the thyroid follicle is this not extending to this colloid or else you can see that it is between this follicles either you can see in between the follicles or in this basal lamina of the parafollicular cells okay so this parafollicular cells which secretes this uh, thyrocalcitonin okay which one uh, regulates this calcium level by down regulating bone resorption and limiting uh, calcium reuptake in the kidneys okay. which lowers the calcium level here you can see here in one upper there is the section of this thyroid in the lower here you can see this the parathyroid gland section of the parathyroid so there is a here is also there is a thin capsule is there it is sending septa okay, which divides into here this lobules can see so here this is highly vascular you can see this uh, uh, capillary fenestrated capillaries are there in between this uh, glandular cells then, so here the cells are arranged in the form of cords or clumps here there are the lightly stained small cells you can see they are numerous in number so these are the chief cells so those are the chief cells and this uh, pink ones these polygonal cells these are the oxyphil cells these are the oxyphil cells okay their cytoplasm is pink and the small nuclei compared to the chief uh, cells chief cells small cells but their nuclei is larger 
okay the chief cells which secretes this one that is the parathormone okay which uh, which increases the blood calcium level by increased reabsorption of calcium by kidneys increasing bond resorption then it stimulates the formation of vitamin d which increases the absorption of calcium from the gut so this oxyphil cells here you can see these are the larger cells this oxyphil cells increases with age here this oxyphil cells so here the section of the thyroid can identify with the help of this large follicles this follicles filled with one that is the colloid is there and between also they can see the para follicle cells are there then this parathyroid gland you can see there is the lightly stained small oval cells and there is the deeply stained polygonal cells also there the slightly stained cells those are the chief cells they are more numerous in number this is also its form of lobules you can see lobules interlobular connective tissue is there okay then here there is the structure of this hypophysis so this uh, hypophysis here it consists of there is an anterior part this is the anterior part here you can see this posterior part this anterior part is called the adenohypophysis which includes the sparse distalis the sparse intermedia and the sparse tuberalis this part is the parts tuberalis uh, which consists of the secretory cells okay consists of cells are arranged in the form of coats or this clumps then here in this posterior part this is the posterior part or this neurohypophysis which includes this sparse uh, posterior then here you can see this is the infundibulum there and also there is the median eminence also there so median eminence is the part of the hypothalamus which connects this hypophysis with this hypothalamus okay. then here here this the structure of this anterior pituitary so it here in this anterior part here in the anterior this is the intermediate part so the anterior pituitary these are the cords of the cells arranged in the form of the cords or clumps there you can see mainly two types of cells one as the chromophiles and chromophobes see the chromophobes which have less affinity to this dyes okay so the cytoplasm will be lightly stained so these cells here you can see this uh, lightly stained cytoplasm with prominent nuclei these cells are the chromophobe cells chromophobe the chromophiles includes this acerophiles and basophiles acerophiles which have the affinity to acidic dye which takes this um, eosin and gives the cytoplasm a pink color so this one these pink color cells these are the acerophiles or the alpha cells okay which contribute some 40 percentage of this total population acerophiles. so this basophiles there see here you can see this the basophiles or this beta cells which have the affin uh, affinity to this uh, basic dye and takes the hematocytic uh, uh, stain and gives the cytoplasm a bluish color so these are the basophiles or beta cells which contribute 10 percentage of the total population of the cells then the chromophobe cells which contribute the 50 percentage of this total population of the cells in this anterior pituitary then here you can see here there are this one these are the acerophiles here you can see this is the basophiles say so lightly saying these are the chromophobes there okay here this region is highly vascular you can see the sinusoids this fenestrated capillaries there then this acidophil secretes uh, this one acidophils which includes the somatotroph cells somatotrophs and this one mammotrophs the somatotroph secretes the somatotropin and this mammotrope secretes this one that is this uh, prolactin okay then basophils consists of this gonadotropes which secretes this uh, follicle stimulating hormone and this uh, luteinizing hormone then this one thyrotropes which secretes this thyroid stimulating hormone then there is the corticotropes which secretes this adrenocorticotropic hormones okay so that's about this anterior pituitary here in this posterior pituitary back to this previous diagram here this part this is the 
neurohypophysis. So it contains this unmyelinated axons of this hypothalamo hypophysal tract from the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei of the hypothalamus. So this neuron cell bodies are there. You can see this axons there, okay, which carry the secretions from this nuclei of this hypothalamus. Okay. And the secretions are stored in this hypothalamus as in the um, dilated axon terminal that are called the herring bodies. And uh, whenever it's needed, it gets released into the scapularis. Okay. So here you can see this is the posterior pituitary. Here it's posterior. So this um, here. These are the nerve fibers. You can see the nuclei of the spitocytes. Here you can see this large one, these uh, pink mass, these are the herring bodies. Okay. So this uh, oxytocin and this ADH, antidiuretic hormone, that are transported in and stored at axon terminals as herring bodies. From there it gets released into the capillaries. Okay. So that's about this posterior pituitary. Then here you can see this is the intermediate part. These are the pass intermedia. It consists of this colloid filled vesicles there, which uh, is rudimentary in humans. It secretes this melanocyte stimulating hormone. So that's the structure of this uh, pituitary gland, microscopic structure. Anterior part, you can see these uh, clumps of the cells that includes this acidophils, basophils, and chromophobes. In between you can see this is the sinusoids there. Then there is an intermediate part which consists of this colloid uh, vesicles there. Then posteriorly these are the nerve fibers you can see. And also there is a nuclei of the pituitocytes also there in this posterior part. Then next is the structure of this uh, suprarenal gland. So this uh, suprarenal gland, so there is an outer cortex and there is an inner medulla, okay. So this cortex, this is the cortex, this is the inner part that is the medulla. This is the capsule is there, from there these are the trabecular or the septae is coming. So the cortex includes, there is a uh, three zones. This is the sauna glomerulosa. Here you can see this is the sauna glomerulosa. Then this layer that is the sauna fasciculator. And here you can see this is the sauna reticularis. And this is the part of the medulla. Okay. This is one part here, the section taken from here to here. Here to here. Okay. So you can see there is an outer cortex and inner medulla. The cortex consists of three zones. In the sauna fasciculata is the large one. Then, see this uh, sauna glomerulosa here. You can see there is the cells are arranged in oval, ovoid groups or in small clumps. Here you can see the cells are arranged. Here you can see here. This is not very clear. This is the low power view. Here it should be arranged in ovoid groups or this clumps. Then in the fasciculator here, this one cells are arranged in vertical columns. See here, these are the vertical columns like this, like this. This is the enlarged view. You can see these vertical columns. And in between the cells, you can see these straight capillaries. See these straight capillaries also there. Okay. In this zona reticularis, here the cells are also arranged in cords or clumps. See here, this is the cords or this clumps here, here, okay. Then the medulla, here you can see, which lies in this uh, center of the suprarenal gland. Here it's also cells are arranged in small cords. Here you can see these are the small cords or uh, clumps. These are, this medulla here, these cells are modified post-ganglionic sympathetic neurons. Okay, these are postganglionic, modified postganglionic sympathetic neurons that have lost their axons and dendrites during development. Okay, and instead they have become secretory uh, in function, okay, which synthesize and secretes catecholamines. Okay, this is medulla. 
see here this is the structure of this uh, suprarenal here you can see this is the cortex this part is the medulla three zones are there zona glomerulosa see here you can see it's in ovoid columns these uh, cells of the zona glomerulosa physically to see the cells are straight in vertical columns and also the straight capillaries are there see in the reticularis these are arranged in the forms of cords or columns which anastomose with each other in the zona reticularis see here you can see in the medulla these are also arranged in the forms of cords or columns here you can see this is the sympathetic ganglion cells also there in between this blood vessels the function of the zona glomerulosa which secretes this uh, mineral or corticals primarily this aldosterone which maintains the fluid and electrolyte balance in the body then the zona vesiculata here which secretes this glucocorticoids mainly that is the uh, cortisol and cortisone okay which uh, increase metabolism and also that uh, maintains the glucal, uh, glucose levels and suppress this inflammatory responses okay and this zona reticularis produces weak androgens okay then here comes this medulla which secretes the catecholamines so cells in the adrenal medulla are activated in response to emotional stress okay or or after or fear causing the release of this epinephrine adrenaline or this nor ep nor epinephrine nor adrenaline into the circulation by activating maximal use of energy and physical effort to overcome the situation that is the fight or this uh, fight or this flight response okay so that's about the suprarenal gland here outer cortex inner medulla cortex consists of three layers zona glomerulosa zona fasciculata and zona reticularis zona glomerulosa consists of this ovoid columns of cells like this okay see this enlarged view this is a nucleic cancer this fasciculata consists of cells are arranged in the forms of this vertical groups like this like this like this like this. nuclei there in between then this uh, capillary is also uh, straightly arranged then this reticularis here is also forms of cords or clumps this is a hyper view here you can see this medulla is also arranged in the form of this cords or clumps okay these are most pontified post ganglionic uh, sympathetic neurons which has secretory function okay next view this is the structure of this pancreas see this uh, pancreas which include consists of there is an exocrine part and this endocrine part okay so this exocrine part you can see here these are these one this is the exocrine part where you can see this pyramidal cells these are the acne is there here you can see the pancreatic acne then endocrine part these pale stained this vascularized unit these are the pancreatic islets okay so coming to this asana here it's also there you can see there is the interlobular connective tissue is there okay which divides into here lobules there then in the interlobular connective tissue there you can see here interlobular ducts there this is one lobule this is one lobule this is the interlobular connective tissue you can see the blood vessels and also ducts there okay see inside this uh lobule you can see this is the exocrine part these are this uh, acini here you can see this pyramidal cells like this here you can see this pyramidal cells okay this pyramidal cells nucleus will be there in the center nucleus see this pyramidal cells are there it shows that is the basal region that is basophilic apical region that is eosinophilic it shows this biphasic staining apical part consists of this uh, cymogen granules here we'll get the cymogen granule cells suppose this is the these are the cells nuclei this apical part contains uh, cymogen granules which are the precursors of this digestive enzymes the apical part here shows this is a uh, is um, which that is uh, affinity to this eosin stain which gives that pink color 
then here basal cells which has affinity to this uh, basic dye which gives that a, a bluish color see here okay that is the biphasic staining it is showing so the exocrine part which secretes this uh, enzyme secretions pass from this pancreas to the sidiornum by means of this ducts so inside the lobule here they can see there will be ducts will be there so the duct system starts from the center of this asinine that here you can see this is the center of asinine cells okay these are the center of asinine cells the duct system of this gland starts from the center of the asinine then in some places there will be the intralobular ducts are there here you can see there is the here it's uh, not able to see any intralobular ducts in this section so here we'll get the intralobular ducts suppose here it's there then here you can see there is interlobular ducts are there interlobular interlobular connective tissue from there this unites to form there is the large ducts large excretory ducts so this intralobular interlobular ducts line with cuboidal cells large ducts line with the pseudo stratified columna to the stratified cuboidal or columnar cells so here, sorry, here you can see this is the exocrine part which consists of this asinus. You can see this one. In the center of the asinus, you can see the central asana cells. That is the beginning of the duct system, beginning of the ducts. Okay. Then in some lobules, you can see this vascularized pale units. These are called the pancreatic islets. Then this is the high power view of this uh, pancreatic islet. See here, see this is the asinine. See, you can see now clearly the pyramidal cells. See the shape should be like this. Sorry. Like this. See the shape of the cells here. Shape. Nucleus to the base. Epical is a uh, basophilic, okay, blue color, and this uh, epical is uh, this one pink color, and the basal is uh, this one blue color. Just showing a biphasic staining, okay. See, you can see there is an intercalated duct is there. That is the intralobular duct or intercalated duct, small ducts within the lobule. Those are the intercalated or intralobular ducts, okay. See, this is the pancreatic islets, okay. Here you can see there are four types of cells are there. One is the alpha cells, beta cells, then delta cells and pancreatic polypeptide cells. So alpha cells which you can see on this uh, periphery of this uh, pancreatic islets. You can see over this periphery you can see these are the alpha cells. Okay. Which contribute uh, about, uh, uh, about some 20 percentage of this uh, pancreatic islets contribute some 20 percent then here in the center there you can see numerous that is the beta cells okay this beta cells which produces insulin which lowers this blood glucose level alpha cells here alpha cells produce this one that is the glucagon which elevates the blood glucose levels okay and this uh, delta cells and pancreatic pop polypeptide cells you can see in numerous sites okay this one so this uh, delta cells which secrete somatostatin, uh, somatostatin which inhibits the secretory activities of both alpha and beta cells then this pancreatic polypeptide cells produce the hormone pancreatic polypeptide which inhibit the production of pancreatic enzymes and alkaline secretions okay so here this is the pancreatic islets here you can see this pale stained unit and the periphery you can see there are the alpha cells this alpha cells contribute 20 percentage of this total population then center you can see these are the uh, beta cells which contribute some uh, 70 percentage of this total population then the remaining uh, this one delta and pancreatic polypeptide contributes this uh, 10 percentage of the total population okay. and the remaining cells are located in various places okay. so this unit here this periphery you can see there is a reticular connective tissue is also there here you can see these are the capillaries capillaries are there so this is the endocrine part of the pancreas 
is called the pancreatic islet. So this pancreas is also very easy to identify the section of this pancreas that is the exocrine part you can see this asinus then in between this exocrine part or in this exocrine part there you can see here there is the pale stained units those are the pancreatic islets then there is the interlobular connective tissues there you can see lobules there in this interlobular connective tissue there are blood vessels there and ducts also there these are the ducts okay. that's all so this microscopic structure of pancreas and uh, supra renal gland is important yes thank you